Britons wield power in today's society. Twitter outrage mobs wield huge power. We see them getting people fired and destroying people's lives all the time. And almost every time that happens, it's white people being publicly shamed for saying something politically incorrect. Good people can unintentionally say and do racist things. But not if you're killing white people to try and start a race war. No, that's not racist at all, is it? Or just wind up supporting racist institutions and practices without even realizing it. Oh, you mean like Black Lives Matter, right? Supporters of which routinely call for murdering white people. So you agree with Malcolm X that white people should be killed? Is that why you're here? You damn right I do. do. So yeah, you do need to die. Colorblindness is not gonna fix racism. It's a good idea in theory, but ignoring race is not gonna solve racism. Race isn't the problem. Treating people differently based on race is the problem. So treating people differently based on race is part of the problem, but being colorblind and treating everyone equally regardless of race, is still racist. What the fuck? Or people of color facing harsher prison sentences for petty crimes in comparison to white criminals. Except the study that she's talking about found that racial disparity in sentences wasn't a result of federal judges being racist. As Larry Elder documents, differences in conviction and sentencing rates by race are due to differences in the gravity of the criminal offenses prior records and other legal variants. We'll be back. Look, I'm not saying that black people... Stay with us, ladies and gentlemen. All right, let me set the table with this. I am not siding with the police. I'm not siding with the government. When I come out and say that what's being done to police randomly being executed around the country, on a weekly basis, sometimes a daily basis, it comes in flurries, comes in clusters. I'm siding with justice. When a psychopathic police officer that was given two years in prison and should have gotten more time puts a black guy in handcuffs that's done nothing to him in San Francisco, gets him down on the ground, shoots him through his back, the bullet bounces back up and goes into his heart. So it's like being shot twice. And the police then grabbed everybody's surveillance footage, all their camera phones, and said that there was no, no video of the incident. Well, somebody in a train that had stopped was able to get the footage of the execution. Do I want mentally ill psychopaths with guns and badges running around? No. And we know some psychopaths want a gun, want a badge. They want power. And they're, they're out there. But to just say the police in general are the reason we have problems in this country is a total red herring. And very bad people like Nancy Pelosi, Hillary Clinton, George Soros, Barack Obama, the former Attorney General, Holder, have clearly been coming out and scapegoating, framing state police, local police, and sheriff's departments around the country. And the media has projected onto them all the problems in the world. So if you want to fix a problem, they're putting the idea out, or if you want to have a revolution, you don't go after the globalists, you don't go after the big bank heads, you don't go after people that actually run things, you go find some cop helping somebody in an auto accident or pumping gas, and you shoot them in the back in a cowardly fashion. And they can find enough really dumb people like this idiot that did this, who got caught within hours, Shannon J. Miles, at his mommy's house. Mommy saw the video of her son and called the police. Imagine having to make that call to her credit. And there's going to be mentally ill white people. I mean, the guy's definitely dumber than a box of rocks doing this, thinking he'd get away with it. And he was dumb enough to buy into the propaganda that Cops are just these robots running around that want to kill black people. The truth is the police slow roll into urban black neighborhoods all over the country. They don't respond. That makes the crime worse. That's the real problem because they get shot at. They don't feel welcome. They get sued. And I've, we've showed the national crime statistics. Whites are just as likely to be shot by police as blacks are. Look up the national numbers per capita for population. 
And the police unions are on record saying, uh, we don't want to get sued. We don't want to get put through the ringer. Cops don't want to just go out and shoot black people. Are there some racist cops out there from the white side? Sure, of course. Are there mentally ill psycho ones? I mean, I got plenty of footage of crazy white cops walking up and pulling their guns on white people, filming them, and, and, and white cops beating up white people and white cops shooting white people in the back. They're just crazy. I mean, you got two million plus cops, you're going to have some crazy ones. And you put somebody, and I'm not saying it's okay, but you put somebody in a stressful job who doesn't have everything lined up right, they're going to do crazy stuff sometimes. It is a not a good job. Not a job I want. I don't excuse what they do because of that. It's just that I realize there's an orchestrated plan by our enemies, our collective enemies. I don't care what color you are to destabilize this country. And now I want to get into the rest of the story, as I promised to do. Then we'll open the phones up and cover their other news in the next hour. I've watched George Soros and I've watched other top New World Order operatives overturn countries in the Middle East, in Eastern Europe, Ukraine, you name it. I've seen what they've done. I've seen them run on TV stations they controlled just two years ago. Footage of cops questionably shooting people in riots and beating people. They decided to run that, act like all the problems in the country were the police. Cops started getting shot, overturned, burned down buildings, martial law, unelected government takes over. Now they exploit that as the next part of the phase against Russia. And I'm not defending and saying Russia's perfect either. The point is they have a formula to do this. And when I sit there and see the headlines almost every day of Black Lives Matter and other demonstrations where they say pigs in a blanket, only good cops a dead cop, this is going to start happening. And, and, and now it's starting to happen. And it's because they've brought in enough illegals, enough people from third world countries, and they've got enough people, 100 million on welfare, 46 million on food stamps, that they can direct these people in class warfare, in social envy, against anybody that's got more money than they do, that it's morally okay to arrest people, to disappear people, to rob people, if they're a cop, if they're in local government, or if they've got a nicer house than you, or if they're white. Whites are about 60% of the population. Most whites are older, retiring. They don't want the new minority population to have the inheritance of the republic because you are America now. Whites killed their babies and didn't have them. They don't want you to have that. They want you to have third world squalor. And the same way you've been controlled in third world countries, you now will be today with class warfare. And they are forging the minority movements that are the majority in most states into an anti-white, anti-local government system to have a revolution in this country, an incremental revolution, a slow motion revolution. That's going to kill thousands of police and thousands of white people. And the answer by white people and the police will be to roll over, embrace political correctness, do what they're told. And under the intimidation and the terrorism, this is terrorism. This is the media directing minorities, predominantly black, to engage in acts of terrorism, shooting, killing, bombing, murdering, beating. I mean, we'll, we'll roll some footage of your TV viewer of you know, the footage a few weeks ago of just a young white women with a baby at a park and blacks come up just with disdain and hatred that why are you even here? And they seem self-righteous because this is the white devil. This is the cause of all the problems. And then they attack the woman and the baby because in their mind, they deserve it because they're inherently bad. They're white. And that's what MTV has taught them. That's what MSNBC has taught them. And the response will be to federalize the police, further militarize them, and further put them into a paramilitary, shoot first, ask questions later, and then all of us will be in deep trouble and we would have lost the police from being in the community to being a paramilitary forever. And that's why this is being done. That's why this is being pushed. 
and it is now a religion of the Democratic Party to start a race war in this country out of which they will bring a more socialist slash communist system because the ultra rich are exempt and offshore and you'll have more wealth transference, you'll have more consolidation of power and it is a formula that's been used over and over again and we're watching it happen right now. And you can see the vitriol when you watch MTV or MSNBC that you know, these TV shows with the headline being white and then the show tells you you're inherently bad where they make all the problems about what color you are, that's racism itself. They're pushing naked racism with a dumbed down public that can't even communicate and doesn't even have language. They're helpless. And that's what Ingsoc in 1984 is, is where they so destroy the language and so destroy common sense and logic that people can't even communicate with each other. It's so bold, it shouldn't be able to succeed. But it is, because people are trying to comply and do what the central media and the central government says for approval. You will only destroy yourself and your family if you do this. And of course, at the end of this globalist takeover, blacks and minorities will be more oppressed than ever and won't have an economy or any ladder to try to get into the middle class. It is a cold-blooded New World Order social engineering operation, and it's so sad, and we have to reject it and realize what it really is and call for unity and peace in a society organized around common sense and free. I'm going to come back and look into the future and what this politically correct nightmare system is going to be, but here's part of a John Bowne report from InfoWars Nightly News where he breaks down the persecution of the press in this country because that's one of the most shameful things the police have been doing. And as they go along with this, they prepare for their own destruction. So I'm going to break down how the police will be knight of the long knifed, taken out when the real revolution comes to power in the next segment. But here's part of John Bowne's report. It's at Infowars.com if you're a radio listener and want to see it. Warning. This report is by a belligerent journalist. The updated Law of War manual has now awarded the military the capability to hold a journalist deemed an unprivileged belligerent without charges and indefinitely. New Defense Department guidelines allow commanders to punish journalists and treat them as unprivileged belligerents if they believe journalists are sympathizing or cooperating with the enemy. The Geneva Convention does not afford such unprivileged belligerents the same basic human rights given to the average citizen. The manual adds, reporting on military operations can be very similar to collecting intelligence or even spying. A journalist who acts as a spy may be subject to security measures and punished if captured. It is not specific as to the punishment or under what circumstances a commander can decide to punish a journalist. Another provision says that relaying of information could be construed as taking a direct part in hostilities. Officials said that is intended to refer to passing information about ongoing operations, locations of troops, or other classified data to an enemy. This could easily be applied to any journalist covering the highly publicized Jade Helm operations. I'm here at Camp Swift right outside of Bastrop, Texas, where an exercise that has never been done will take place. Frank Smith, senior advisor for journalist security at the Committee to Protect Journalists, said, At a time when international leadership on human rights and press freedom is most needed, the Pentagon has produced a self-serving document that is unfortunately helping to lower the bar. It was only two months ago when retired U.S. Army General and the former Supreme Allied Commander of Europe for NATO, Wesley Clark, advocated rounding up radicalized and disloyal Americans and putting them in internment camps for the duration of the war on terror. I do think on a national policy level, we need to look at, um, at what self-radicalization means because we are at war with um, uh, this group of terrorists. They do have an ideology. In World War II, if uh, someone supported Nazi Germany at the expense of the United States, well, we didn't say that was freedom of speech. Uh, we, we put him in a, in a camp. We, they were prisoners of war. 
Well, the difference is that World War II was a war declared under Article 1, Section 8, Clause 2 of the Constitution 